Hi everyone and welcome to our What's New for Workflow Manager at 1091. We have a lot of exciting features to talk about today ranging from improvements to our server and app to automatic work orchestration and a number of exciting enhancements as well. We typically talk about these use cases as opportunities for Workflow Manager workflows and today I'll be relaying what is new through the eyes of two of them, an incident management system and a data submission system. Before starting out though, if you're unfamiliar with Workflow Manager and want to learn a bit more, please check out our recently released September overview video available on YouTube and our product page. Now, incident request systems are popular in many industries like transportation, utilities, AEC and more. And with Workflow Manager, you can actually make a COTS implementation of one without a lot of hassle. In this scenario, we'll take in a transportation incident and we'll review it and comment choose between some potential actions to take and then monitor that incident. So this example is a little forced to show off some of that specific functionality. So consider it more inspiration to a real world system. Now we're going to start off on the work page of the Workflow Manager web app as someone who needs to create that incident. In this case, using Survey123 integrated within the app to enter it. We'll set the incidents location in Survey123 using the map to the Esri campus and we'll submit. The submission is accepted. Workflow Manager associates the survey, takes the location as you can see here in the job panel and sends the submitter an email thanking them for their submission. Now let's take a look at the workflow diagram to see how that was just so smooth. We see the three steps of the survey, the location and the email, the job location can now be set based on a geometry. So in this case, a new arcade expression to take the shape directly from the survey that was entered. And in that survey, we didn't actually enter our email address. So the email step was configured to extract that email address from our enterprise user profile using this new expression available at 1091. And we can see here it was sent right to me now let's try another incident and set the location a different way using the address. So we create another incident job and update it. But this time type in the Redlands campus address and let's see what happens. We see the location get computed and the coordinates displayed using a simple manual step just for our reference here. And we can proceed to see again the incidents location was set correctly in the job panel. So how did we do it so easily this time? Let's take a look at the diagram. So following the top branch now, we actually use the new web request step to send the address to a geocoder service to get those coordinates. This new step allows you to configure calls to web APIs to integrate them seamlessly into your workflows. We can attach the response to the job or parse the results of the response into step output values that can be used in other steps of the diagram. So take note in this case, we're parsing out the response's location to an output value called location using a JSON extraction path. Many services require authorization, including this one, if you're actually gonna use it in production and not in a demo. And so using the authentication tab, we can configure many authorization parameters depending on the needs of the request. If you want to secure the information you input in the dialog, you can actually configure it as a user defined setting, which can be encrypted and then referenced in the step itself using Arcade. So user defined settings are also new and they can be used to store other information that you want to use across workflows. Returning to the diagram, we can see that the location is again defined using an expression, but this one uses the location output value from the web request step we configured, taking those coordinates and setting the job's location seamlessly. And we can see how a manual step can present some information either as a simple notification or as a debugging tool to take that expression and show the results. And now both the user prompt and the help of a step take arcade expressions. Lastly, you can see how we determined which path to go down by checking to see if that address was entered or not based on the path expression. And overall, adding an incident through this work page is really just one way to do this. You could instead 
uh, really just add it through survey123 directly. It could be coming instead from a stream of events that you're actually monitoring using ArcGIS Velocity. You could retrieve them from a third-party system on a regular schedule, which is something you can also do in this release, make a workflow to go get information from another system, really one of many possible use cases, and then wire it up so that it runs on a schedule you decide and can create new jobs or gather information. All right, let's return now to the last incident that was submitted, but this time as the reviewer. An initial review would be to familiarize ourselves with the incident. Normally there might be more fields, but there's often scant information available initially when an incident is, is uh, created. We'll accept the incident and add a comment. Commenting is yet another new feature at 1091 that's available as an add-on input to most steps and viewed in the job panel. Actually, just now an update came in, so I'm gonna add another comment directly in the panel. Being able to comment is a really useful feature, but when I entered the comment in the job panel, it wasn't actually driven by the workflow itself. So how would I be able to tie it to an email notification to send an update out to the organization at large? So along with job scheduling, a job type can now be configured to perform actions when certain activities occur. So in this case, sending an email when a comment is added to the job. Email templates can now be configured in our lookup and template tab as seen here. And Arcade, again, easily used to extract the last comment entered on the job. And here is the resulting email giving us the last comment that was entered based on sending that email from the specific action. All right, let's return to the incident now again as the reviewer. Now we're at a static point in the incident where as the reviewer, I can choose between different actions depending on what is happening. So let's say in this case, I need to create work on behalf of this incident for another department to order a tow truck. I can pick between my two choices here and a new request is created. And let's take a peek at what that diagram configuration looks like. So you see the main question here and the possible choices listed out. Each one takes us down a different path. And then as you can see, we circle back to that main question where we choose actions. What I have here is a little messy with all the different paths and I apologize for that, but we can see the path for creating new work as well, which leads out of that second question step to the new create job step, which allows you to choose the type of work to create and to optionally establish a relationship as a child job or to make this current one dependent on the one that is created. So we'll talk about parent-child relationships more in the next demo, but in this case, we did choose to leave the dependency off. Adding a dependency would hold the incident until the tow truck work was completed. Uh, we don't wanna do that here. It would prevent me from performing other actions, but dependencies are very important when you want to enforce these types of relationships between work where one piece of work can't progress until another piece is finished. Looping back to the question allows the reviewer to continue to choose actions until the incident is complete. In this case, let's escalate this incident for a manager's attention. You can see it's reassigned from us and now assigned to manager one, but actually manager one only handles the escalation of certain incidents. So how did the workflow know to assign it to them? Well, let's check the diagram. So we'd set the path leading to the manager review with a simple expression and path assignment also now accepts expression. So accidents can be routed to manager one and other incidents routed to manager two in one easy process. So this is an example of a quick caught space incident request system. Lots of room to improve it and enhance it further, but would you believe that this system only took me two hours to build the whole thing? And the only customization I did were those few small expressions along the way. So the next demo is for a data submission and ingestion system. Again, what I'll be showing leans into showing off our new functionality and there are lots of ways the system could be changed to fit your organizational purpose. In this case, we're going to request someone to provide us some parcel data updates. They'll submit their data and we'll run it through some automatic and manual QC before accepting or rejecting it. 
One thing this will show off is our new evaluate data quality step, which is able to trigger attribute data reviewer and topology rules configured on a service and then use the results to guide the workflow. So let's jump in by creating our request. While I have a specific location I'd like to draw, I get to pick a rough area first from this list and I'll select area B. When the define location step starts, you can see I'm automatically now zoomed into area B, making it easier to define the location. I draw my request area in this case, but I don't have any supporting docs to provide at this point. Now it would be nice to associate the request to that larger area B for tracking. So I'm going to set the parent job ID manually on this job to establish the relationship which is something I'm just showing manually for this demo. Normally that would be something you would handle automatically. We can see the work has been assigned automatically as well to agency three and the parent child relationship has been established to job 117, that higher level managerial job for area B. Let's review some of the configuration tricks to that request in the diagram. Here we prompt for the initial inputs like choosing area B. And then on the define location step, we see that now there is a new input to take search text. If the web map is configured to search on layers, you can now pre-populate the search using Workflow Manager to set the initial zoom. So by setting area B as the desired area, the step zooms to B automatically when the define location step is launched. Then similar to setting the assignment to manager one in the last demo, we've extended it further to uh, an if statement in the two of the email to send it to the appropriate contractor agency. Based on the project area, it'll set the email accordingly. The associate to parent step takes the job ID directly into the jobs table and the job reassigns to the appropriate contractor based on another if statement. Now we're going to take over from the contractor's perspective, attaching a new data submission and watching the automatic review process, which includes the evaluate data quality step, where validation rules will be run on the job spatial version for the area bounded by the job's location. If there are too many errors, the submission will be rejected back to the contractor. The orange steps in this workflow are not out of the box. Those are geoprocessing Python steps to unload the attached data and append it to the version and to create an error report from the results contained on the service. Back on the work page is the contractor. We'll add our submission of parcel data. We'll first add the one with a lot of errors. So our job version is now created, the data prepared and QC'd, but unfortunately there are too many errors and the submission is rejected. So we'll try again this time with the improved data. And this time our contribution passed and was accepted. So let's now switch hats to the QC specialist in ArcGIS Pro to see what if any errors remain in the submission based on the rules we'd configured. I do see job 123 in my queue at the bottom. Starting the step zooms me to the works location, switches spatial versions and opens the error inspector. We can see I have two errors in the submitted data. Checking them quickly, it looks like there is a missing attribution of Coronado here. So we can verify that that does make sense and perform any additional editing tasks required. To finish off the demo, let's focus on now overviewing the jobs that are in the system on the manage page as the production coordinator. So you can see here we have the four larger area jobs and our smaller job in the middle for area B. We can add a filter to filter that job list based on our map extent. And now let's visualize the work based on the parent child relationship. So this allows us to easily see that job 123 is a child of 117 and that the other three areas have no associated jobs to them at the moment. This simple visualization is a really powerful way of getting a quick overview of the work that's in the system and its relationship to one another. Also added at 10.9.1 was the ability to add notes to a job. So you can see here we added a few high level notes to the parent as the production coordinator. And we'd also configured a dependency between the jobs. So the parent work cannot be completed until all of the children have finished. So you can see on the parent it is blocked by job 123 and on job 123, we can easily see it is blocking the parent. All right, let's circle back on ArcGIS Pro to see some of the other enhancements. 
So at 2.9, you can now sort jobs. And the fields available on the job tiles are configurable to the search results, and they're not hard-coded. Moving to the workflow, let's create a job where the first step is to update the job status and priority. Now these values are all configurable. So you can use our defaults or you can remove them and add your own in the workflow designer. Commenting is also now supported in ArcGIS Pro. And then after finishing this step, we can actually see it went on hold, in this case a scheduled hold, but it could have been a dependency on the job as well. We also started on the first phase of construction of the job pane in Pro. This will be where users can see and edit all the job information separately from being driven by the workflow itself. The goal here is to match the job details panel on the web. Unfortunately, this will be a multi-release initiative to get fully functional, but we've made a start by allowing you to view and edit job properties and most extended properties. If you do need to access more of the job properties, commenting attachments, then you can click on this link at the bottom of the pane to open the job on the web while we finish off the remaining functionality in Pro. To wrap up, the Workflow Manager server can now also be installed in a multi-machine configuration to support high availability and performance systems. We now also support localization and internationalization standards, which also means that the priority and status are now configurable, and you can also change the default job name on a job template. And GP services can now be configured to run in extended sequences through Workflow Manager without being interrupted. And overall, for more information, please check out our product page, blogs, and overview videos, and I thank you for watching.